Hey, hello everybody. Welcome. Hi. Yeah. Different angle of the camera. See that? Yeah. Hey, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah. I'm uh, David John Sponheim, as opposed to just David Sponheim. And many people don't realize that there are a couple David Sponheims in the country. So I'm David John Sponheim, the only one. Uh, yeah. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? Hey, so today we're going to be making some pretty cool fish. Yeah, I had a rockfish fillet that I picked up at the market on sale. I got a bunch of these things. Oh, you can't see it very well there. The lighting is not very good. Oh. Camera's not good. Rockfish fillet, uh, skin on fillet. These things were incredibly low price. I, I got this normally an $8 bag, a two pound bag for, I got it for $2 and 99 cents. And uh, so I'm only cooking with like a dollar or fifties worth of fish, but I'm gonna accommodate $2 for you. Yeah. And let's do the rockfish fillet. Yeah, and I'm going to do this uh, in a way that makes sense for a lot of people. Uh, you can replace this with tuna fish. I don't really care. Uh, but I'm going to put this in a, a pasta. Bowtie pasta. In bowtie pasta. Yeah. Bowtie pasta. With uh, broccoli. Right, with broccoli. So, there we go. Hey, let's get in the chat room too. I'm gonna to open up my chat rooms and I have to open up my uh, browser that will handle Periscope. Sarah wonders why I use a certain browser for Periscope. It just handles it better for some reason. Different angle uh, because I, let me get the other camera going here. I, I got a toaster oven. Wait a second, that's not, what's going on here? Oh, the camera cover's over it. It, it helps to take the camera cover off, Dave. There you go. Yeah, so I picked up a toaster oven, look at that. And now the computer is on the toaster oven. And I gotta tell you, this Black & Decker is uh, one heck of a, a fantastic toaster oven, I mean. I'm kind of amazed. It's all, it's a black silver veneer, but uh, for $29, how can they do that? You know, and it worked great. It didn't have a lot of burn off. Normally when you get technology that's, you know, out of the box, it has a little burn off smell, like a plastic smell. It didn't have any at all. It's very good. So uh, Black & Decker really got their act together. That's, that's my, uh, my position on that. Now, as you know, this is David's kitchen, so, right. Many of you don't realize that uh, that there are uh, places that you can find peaceful in your life. And one of those places is a kitchen for me. Okay, $7 for five. Oh, that's a lot of money. And yeah, let's see if we can pull that off. Rock, rock hish in bow tie with broccoli. Rock hish. Rock hish. Rock hish man. Okay, now normally I wouldn't uh, cook with fresh fish that's beautiful like this. I'll show it to you. There it is. Yeah, normally I wouldn't even bother. It's like, look at that ice that's coming off of there. Hello. Right off, it was frozen at sea, individually frozen. I was reading the uh, packaging on this. And uh, rockfish is caught year round off the northwest coast of the USA with a mild and slightly sweet taste and medium texture. They're very versatile and used in many cooking methods. And reliable resource management and a commitment to sustainable fishing practices make rockfish a pleasure to serve for any meal. Isn't 
Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Seven dollars. That's two dollars for the fish. A dollar for the bow tie pasta. I got a, a sale on this ten for ten for uh, ten dollars. So yeah, let's unplug this. It's unsightly. That unsightly plug. Yeah, and I'm gonna put uh, cauliflower and broccoli in it. So let me get that out of here. You know how I love to cook with broccoli and cauliflower, and yeah, it's pretty good. It's a cruciferous vegetable, which makes it pretty good for you. Anti-carcinogenic, actually, broccoli and cauliflower. And a little side note about broccoli, it, it has the lowest amount of Roundup residue of any vegetable. It must be something to do with the way they cook, or the way they grow it, rather. Today is the uh, 25th, all right, and uh, right, flipping right along here. Tech censorship. Uh, you know, I don't want to raise any flags. Cooking, pandemic, no, we'll just talk 5G tonight. I know 5G is a point of a reference I always talk about with technology. And I don't even post vaccines anymore on Periscope because it is such a top, hot subject and people are, you know, prone to uh, look for it. And then Twitter is prone to knock it off. Knock it off, buddy. It is such a top, hot subject yeah. and people are. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Google shoe. Thank you very much. Google. Yeah, so the first thing I do is heat up some water. Uh, I got that going. I've got about this much water in the pan and uh, enough to cover the bow tie comfortably and with about an inch to spare. And I love bow tie because it's perhaps the, the most delicate type of pasta when you're eating it and it kind of gives you that feeling like you're e eating at a restaurant, you know? Tom, remember we talked about your, your nonsense? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you, you reference my amazing pectoral muscles, I, you have to talk about them in a positive sense. Yeah. You, you, you can't talk about my pecs in a, in a way that you said, how can we retrofit a bra for a presidential candidate? That's so disturbing. You just muted yourself, man. I don't eat hardly any pasta. Yeah. No, I, dude, I, I have a very slim physique. My goodness, what's wrong with you? Look at this. I mean, I'm like sculpted. What the hell's wrong with you people? God, wow, you really are messed up in the head. You realize I weigh 10 pounds less than my driver's license says I should wear? Wait. This is a 39 inch waist, dude. Yeah, 39 inch. I'm shooting for 38. I got it down quite a bit, actually. I don't know, man. You know, you people are probably these really overweight people sitting there in your big blobs of fat and flesh and adipose tissues just floating over your body. Yeah. I feel so sorry for you. Now, as you know, pasta is one of the most important items in a, a rep, your repertoire of low budget solutions. And, yeah, you want to wash the bag out, Dave. Otherwise, it'll smell like rotten fish in the garbage can. And what a tragedy to have to throw this plastic bag in the garbage. You know, I normally would save this bag, but it ripped. And it doesn't have a resealable top, which means that it wouldn't be ideal for, re for recycling or reusing. 
Now, when I say I throw it away, I'm really throwing it into a dumpster that's going to be stuck in some landfill. Right. That's, that's really not the best solution. Hey, you don't mind if I pour a little organic coffee, do you? Perfect. I'm going to top it off with a little whole milk, if you don't mind. These are recyclable, although they do, do have plastic in them. Yeah, they are recyclable. Now, Sarah made a good point. I was buying the, uh, the coated plastic, the, the wax coated paper ones because I didn't want to, you know, throw them in the recycle. But she said, no, they're recyclable. So I, I'm willing to put up with plastic over, over, over wax on paper. Well, let me tell you a little bit about a homo milk, okay? While we're cooking. I'm gonna throw a little, uh, yeah, I'm gonna pour the water out of this. Whoa, jeez. That was a full on drop can. Did you see my feet? Did you see my, did anyone see my feet? Be honest. Be honest, please. Did anyone see my feet? No, Dave. Thank God. Okay. My goodness. Thank you, Jim. Jim Genius was kind enough to say thank you. No. Okay, let's do this again. Let's let's dump this water. Better yet, I'm going to put the fish water in the bow tie pasta water, okay? Because I'm just heating that up right here. I'm going to get that fishy smell in the bow tie pasta water. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. Great idea, Dave. Thank you very much. Now, my main herb with this dinner is going to be dillweed. But of course, you know, I always like the other, the other options. Whatever you got, I don't really care. That is rockfish. I'm going to put a little dill weed on it. Yeah, I also like to cook it with a little egg too. And milk. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just soak it in a little milk right now with the dillweed on it. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna throw an egg on there too. All right. This dinner is gonna require a little butter too. And I picked up some organic sour cream from Humboldt County where I met Sarah up there in uh, Eureka. And we actually saw the cows that made this milk. So, well, 20 years ago, we saw the, uh, the ancestors of the cows that made this milk. So that's pretty nice. Okay, first order of business is the onion. And today we have a beautiful onion, ready to be trimmed up, ready to go. What a nice big onion too, look at that. Now I can get the onion and the cauliflower and the broccoli for about $3. Calm down there, buddy. Yeah, and let me go into iVlog, hang on. Accessing iVlog. I wanna try, I wanna see if I can get in there. If I log in there, I might get a few viewers. 
I especially like the guys that like to give me problems and, and contest everything I say. That's the fun part. Hold on, please, while I mute the sound. All right, thanks for the approval there, buddy. I, I see you're really uh, very respectful there, Noah. And how long do you plan on staying in the chat room uh, without being banned with that name? I mean, do you realize that I mean, that is a bannable offense? You realize that you can't just stand there and, and claim that I'm, I'm looking like anything. How dare you? How dare you? We'll be watching you. Man, that's a lot of onion. I can't get rid of that. I want to keep that outer skin. Okay, yeah. If you run into kind of a blemished outer skin, just, you know, I get organic onions. So first reference to organic in the entire video. And these organic uh, onions are, you know, they're almost the same price. Pay a little extra, folks. They're like 50 cents more a bag. I just like to do it. Okay, I'm going to just turn the rear burner on to level three. When looking at, uh, you're always looking at the knife whenever you're using it. That's a, that's a requirement. And you don't want the very base of the onion. You see that, that thing? You don't want that. It's a little too harsh when somebody bites into it. They're like, oh my gosh, what was that terrible tasting thing? That was an onion, sir. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the, uh, the fish is looking really special, spiffy. Let's mix that uh, egg up a little bit. What do you say? Yeah, a little rotation. Rotate, 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 rotate. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go skin side down on the grill, which means you're going to hang on. You get gets this a little bit closer to me here. There we go. We're going to pump this up. All right, and then we're going to pour the uh, put the uh, spray of uh, safflower oil on top of the the warming grill. Okay. You can cover it up. Once it gets a little warm, I'm going to put a little bit of butter down on it. No more than about a pat of butter, just for taste. You know, Julia Childs, one of my mentors, the CIA agent, you know, Julia Childs, the woman I watched cooking when I was a kid, turned out she was a CIA agent. Isn't that weird? Man, that's good coffee. Ah, let me show you what I put in there. Mm. Papua New Guinea Organic Certified. Mild, earthly, earthy with a light, so a light body. Complemented by a sweet, acidic, and deep, complex flavor. Oh, that's not all. I also picked up this 50% off bag of vanilla Guatemalan medium roast organic Arabica. And that's got the natural vanilla in it. And man, that thing pops, I'm telling you. I know how to make drip coffee. 
fantastic. I'll be, we'll be watching you. I hear you, Amber. I mean, you got to keep eating that food. This cat is so sensitive to genetically modified food that she, uh, she doesn't want to eat it. Yeah. That sucks, don't you think? No, actually, she, she just knows inherently that it's bad for her, whereas humans don't know that. Humans don't have any clue. They don't realize that what's bad for them. They put genetically modified corn out in a, with a big bin and opened it up to the rats, and then they put heirloom corn, corn right next to it. And then they let the rats into the barn. This, this is a, a true story. The rats ate all the heirloom corn. Now, heirloom corn is the kind you get with popping corn. Uh, they can't pop GMO corn. They haven't been able to figure that out, making corn that's GMO that's poppable. So heirloom corn, corn was just eaten up by the rats completely. Yeah. Nice, huh? They didn't touch the GMO corn. Not a single bite. They left the building. They got out of there. Today we'll be using Patty LaBelle's No Salt, Miss Patty's No Salt Seasoning. I love that stuff. You can use things like oregano and Italian seasoning. It doesn't really matter. You just got to season it somehow, but I prefer dill weed. So we got the dill weed in there in the milk mix. And the thing I'm, I'm using is a wet cook process with this fish. So what we're going to do first is get that pan nice and hot and throw the onions down and caramelize them and, with the butter. And then we're going to nest the, uh, the back side of the fish, the skin side, into the butter, hot butter. Meanwhile, we've got a full boil going on over here. And I'm going to take a rinse off my broccoli and my uh, cauliflower which are not, they are not in fact uh, organic, but hey, you can only do so much in this world, right? And I recommend people trying to do organic whenever possible and trying to do non-GMO whenever possible. But really, we're not talking about the end of the world if you have a genetically modified food item, seriously. It's not like the end of your life. You'd have to be eating that for 30 years to really make a difference, statistically speaking. All right, that's some good stuff though. I, you know, and I like the fact that broccoli is low residue. It has low pesticide residue in general. So, we're gonna cook that broccoli in the boiling water first. So I'm gonna get the broccoli going in the boiling water so the nutrition from the broccoli and the cauliflower goes into the pasta. Here we go. Oh, that fish, I can smell it from here. It's great. I love fish. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just take the florets off of here like this. Okay, like that. Just drop them in the water. And when you have a big one like this, you may want to make a little cut in the, in the, the cruciferous section. Maybe a couple little cuts so they, they break out a little bit better. There you go. Okay, if you're cooking for five, you want to make five different cuts. Okay, with the broccoli, you just take and twist the top off like that, throw that in the water. Oh, I'm not done with the stock. I'll be cooking that in just a bit. Pull these uh, broccoli florets off like that, one by one, dropping them in the water. And then cover the water. All right. You know, I do like to put a little seasoning in my water. So I'm going to throw a little Italian seasoning in there just to kind of get it going. Just a splash. Yeah, why not? I mean, we're heating it up. We might as well heat up the, you know, little Italian seasoning. So these stocks are really good to, to fry with. So let's lift the top here. See if we got a sizzle yet. Nope, that's still not done. I'm going to take it up to level six. That back burner is kind of a, a lazy burner. 
Yeah, it's just, uh, I'm going to run it at level six. You know, when I, uh, when I looked at this house and I, I realized, well, we've got to make this house more durable for the future. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a kitchen remake because you can spend upwards of $50,000 on a new kitchen, right? So I said, well, what would make this house look, look decent? And obviously the Formica countertop is really a, you know, a negative side of the, the whole thing. It's Formica. It's not Corian. I mean, it's the old stuff back in the 90s. And I thought, well, the best way to make this kitchen look stylish is to paint the background something neutral. So I went with a coffee color on the whole kitchen. And it had these uh, veneer cabinets like that. So it worked really well with coffee. And then we put a new stainless steel kitchen sink in with a reverse osmosis water filter. And then I added a little uh, snack, you know, just a little spice rack up there that I picked up at the thrift store. And it's, it's a very uh, interesting thing. Then we did the flooring, which is Pergo. See that? And then we've, we've got a, a silver plate for the, ki for the outside of the dishwasher. Now, the dishwasher is like 20 years old or 25 years old, and it still works. And I clean it. You know, it, it's, not, it's not bad. There's no, no real dirt in it. No serious dirt, I should say. And, uh, yeah, and, and then we bought a stainless steel, uh, uh, you know, range. This cost about $500. And then we bought a refrigerator for about, uh, I think we spent about $800 on that. So for the, the whole kitchen, including the Pergo and the paint and everything, we spent $2,000. And I think that's the best way to re revive an older vehicle like this or an older, uh, this is a modular home, so it worked very well. Okay, I can't wait anymore. Let's just throw the onions in. Got Definitely got a sizzle there. Perfect. All right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we'll cut up this. Get the broccoli in there right away. With broccoli, you don't want to have these little leaves on there. That's something you don't want to cook with. There's only a couple of them, so it's not a big deal. And then just nicely chop that about a quarter inch each. If you have a really thick stock, you have to pull the outside hull off the stock. Otherwise, it's inedible. You can throw that right in with the onions. Go straight down on the cauliflower stalk. And then take the bottom off. It's usually a little discolored. There you go. Now, some people eat the middle right in there. It's full of vitamins. So I might eat that later. Munch on it. Okay, that smells really good. Yeah, it's starting to smell like a, a real dinner here. Okay, you want to do a simple crisscross on this. Kind of dicing it up. Okay, that goes in at the bottom. Throw it all together and take some of that milk that you have. Just, and just put that on the bot on the on the pan right there like that. See that? You need a little bit of moisture in there, about two or three tablespoons. So what I'm doing is steam frying at a high heat right now. Yeah, I love glass top stoves because you can always practically eat off the top of them. They're they're so clean. 
All right, now, with every bag, I've got this big question. Do I save it for another use? Now, I've used this bag four times already, and because it has a hole in it, I'm going to throw it. But I'm becoming more and more conscious of the uh, wasteful plastic that we have to the point where it's now part of our show. And I don't understand why the Democrats can't take that on as an important issue. You know, the Democratic Party I was a, bar a part of cared about ecology. And now it's been reduced to, oh, we just care about climate change. It's not the same thing. Climate change is being engineered with weather modification. They're doing it rapidly. It, normally, if we just allowed carbon to develop, it would take about 200 years for it to impact our environment. Right now, it's not impacting our environment. It's heavy metals that they're spraying in the sky. So, yeah, Anderson Cooper, hi. It's funny, you're here, but Jeffrey Epstein's not. I don't get that. Aren't you two a pair? Or don't you travel together? Oh, not. I'm sorry, the wrong Anderson Cooper. I thought you were Anderson Cooper. Yeah, I had to throw them away, Anderson. There's no other way to do it. I can recycle them if they're plastic bags, like garbage bags. Believe it or not, I take these garbage bags to a recycler. I do. And they do have a recycling plan, but the plastic bags, I understand they make uh, like mesh bags for vegetables that are reusable. So if you want to avoid plastic bags, you can do that. I get like four uses out of a plastic bag. Seriously. I carry them with me. So don't, don't try to ecology shame me, Anderson. Yeah, you need to ask yourself, what are you doing in your life? Don't lay that trip on other people. But anyway, I'm going to be the one to clean up the plastic waste on Earth. Apparently, the Democrats are too incompetent to do that. Okay, see how you have a nice steam going there? All right. Take your, uh, your, your fish and just set it right, right on that, that pan right there like that. See? Right in there, like nested in there like that. Kind of push the skin down to the base of the pan. Put the rest of the, uh, the material in this mix right here. Glaze the fish with it. There you go. Skin side down. And... Uh, Oh, I just found another one of those. Hang on. Okay, I'm still steaming my broccoli. Okay, we'll have to cook that a little higher. I'm going to turn that up to uh, level six as well. Okay, we got two units running at level six. Full steam ahead. We threw a little butter in there. I'm going to grab a little hot water out of here and put it in here. Get the rest of that egg out of there. See that? So what I'm doing is I'm creating a roux. And normally you would be using something like wine to add to it to, you know, really. But we're going very low budget here. We're not going to ask you to put wine or anything in it. It would be a white wine in case you were using wine. I'd probably do a light splash of Chardonnay on this fish. Well, being it has a sweet, fruity taste, according to the experts. Yeah, no Jeffrey Epstein, but Anderson Cooper comes in. That's where. Hey, Kamala, how are you? They called you that in college? What? The Cleveland Steamer? Oh my gosh, do you realize how derogatory that is? I wouldn't say that, Kamala, if I were you. Yes, I read chat and I do the show. I am multitasking constantly. Okay, I'm going to throw that Patty LaBelle on there right now. Ready? Make sure it's shaking. Okay. Throw Patty on there. That has kind of a, a slight turmeric taste to it. I'm going to throw some more dill weed on the top of that.
Yeah, it has kind of a little curry smell to it. Yeah. Now you could also use ground ginger as a, an option. Garlic powder is good. Onion powder is good. But if you buy onion salt or garlic salt, remember you are adding a lot of salt to your dinner. And one of my favorite ingredients for the top of the fish is pepper. So we're going to do a little pepper tip. Okay. All right, we're almost done on the vegetables. Okay, we're going to pull those out using a perforated plastic spoon, as seen in the picture. Whereas a non-perforated plastic spoon is for sauces. Yeah, I do occasionally work with plastic. Well, I'm, I'll make do with anything. You know, I, I can live in the, I've got bug out bags with cook kits in it. I, every car that I have has a bug out bag with a cook kit in it. So I'm prepared to live in a bug out environment at any time and cook. Sterno and is the best thing on the road with a plat with a, some metal cans. So if you're packing for a, a couple weeks, you may want to get at least four stands of cans of Sterno to cook for about two weeks. Yeah, you didn't know I was a bug out expert, did you? That's one of the many things you don't know about me. Unless you watch our show constantly, then you know everything about me. You know, we had a meeting a, a long time ago, uh, what, 2010. We met a guy named Mr. Bumpus, who is, he's actually a character in the movie, The Christmas Story. And he lives in Cleveland and he's one heck of a character. And we met him at uh, midnight at Denny's in Cleveland. And we talked, Sarah and I, and he, he talked till four in the morning because we were driving through that area and we just kept driving, literally. I think we stayed in a, in a rest area that night. But uh, we had a great conversation with him. And uh, you really get a, you get a feel for uh, how people know you. When he told me, literally, David, I don't want to hear about that. You know, I was telling him a story. At, in the four hours we were together at Denny's, I was telling him a story. And he actually said, I don't want to hear about that. I've heard it like five times. Polycarbonate is bad. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Noah. I carry it. No, not 140 pounds victory for cake. No. You know, Doom Scholar, that's just insane. I have sculpted abs and, and my entire upper torso is like built like a rock. I should take my shirt off and show you my like rips. I just can't believe you'd say that. Okay, now is the time to turn the fish. Yeah, you don't want to cook fish too long on one side. We're just going to take that fish and turn it, flip it over. Right onto the herbs, like that. Good, we got a little crispy there. You can take a little bit off the bottom. There you go. Push everything around. All right. Nice. Okay, cover it up. I'm going to haul the vegetables in now. So, you're going to watch me move some vegetables over. Hauling the vegetables. Wow. That's great. Okay, I still have water that's got vegetable juice in it. I'm going to throw the Ronzoni bow tie pasta in. And it is non GMO, by the way. Non GMO. You can see it right there. Now, because I like to cook with a little more salt when I'm making pasta, I'm going to throw a little salt in there too. Enhance the flavor. Just a pinch of the Himalayan salt. I can't believe all the Himalayan salt I've used 
Can you believe all that? It was like full last year. Okay, I'm pouring that into a roaring boil. Okay. Pushing the pasta shells down. Making sure everything's kind of moving around initially and then just keep cooking it at a high temperature. If you do cover it, cover it slightly, leave some room for air. That dish can be turned to a low now over here. And I'm going to crack open this beautiful organic cultured sour cream from Humboldt, California. I mean, this is the best stuff in the world. We got this at a discount. So I normally wouldn't buy it. It was like six bucks normally. I think I got it for $2 a container. Yes, it is kind of, you know, it's getting that point where it needs to be eaten. So I'm going to take a big scoop of this out of here like that and put it right on top of the broccoli. And I'm going to press into the, everything with kind of a spoon and kind of break it up slightly. I'm going to grab a little more of that because I, I love it so much. And what I'm doing is, is creating a mock white sauce. Okay, let that cook and steam right now. Oh, I got to taste this. Mmm. 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 That is so good. Mm. Wow. That's the real deal. Yeah, that's the real deal, man. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Julia Child said that butter. And you can use more butter in this dish, too, if you want. She said butter was like a little piece of heaven on earth when you, when you taste it. And I, I agree with that. Same with a really good sour cream. Okay, give that bow tie a stir. Otherwise, it'll stick. But all the, uh, all the water from the vegetables is, is now going into the, uh, the pasta which is a great use of that vitamin. Okay, we got our dinner container here. We've settled on that. Hey, thanks for not DDoSing me during the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm an opposing guy. I mean, I'm six foot four and I'm built like a, a football player. So most people are a little bit, you know, put off by my presence, I think. It's, I'm intimidating. I, I can't help but be intimidating. Yeah, it, it's 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 tough because I'm I'm a very peaceful person and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hurt anyone unless they were trying to hurt me that I kick their ass. But if you can imagine what was you know what's going through my mind when people look at me going, man, you're like really really imposing. And I'm thinking, you know, how do I tone that down? You know, hey buddy. I've had people walk up to me who are my size and and they and I've had people threaten me or my size I have yeah I'm not intimidated even by guys bigger than me six foot seven or eight I'm not intimidated you got a roaring boil going over there and we got this on a low here You just think of the outcome. You know, the best thing to do when, when you encounter somebody who's threatening you is say, hey, excuse me, but I have to go talk to the manager. And then talk to the manager of the store saying, hey, hey there's a guy threatening me. I want you to document this in your mind so you know that when I sue the hell out of this guy, it, it's somebody you may you know, know of when I call you as a witness. Yeah, always try to, in fact, if somebody's attacking you, always go to the manager or go to the... Uh, anywhere you can to find some secondary witness. Otherwise, you're, you know, you could get into a little scuffle and it could be kind of ugly and you need witnesses. Wow, that's cooking really well. I'm going to turn it down to level three now.
and I'm going to seal the uh, the heat into that bow tie pasta right now. It's going to it's going to foam up, and I'm still running it at, at level three now. Bow tie pasta is going to take about maybe seven minutes, and we only have seven minutes till the end of the show, so we're we're running very close, very tight. Hey, don't talk about my nipples in the show, please. I mean, you have nipples. I mean, what do I wear, pasties around them to, to cover my nipples when I have a shirt like this? I, you know, I like this shirt. It's a Giorgio Brutini. It's a really a great cut. So you talking about my nipples kind of detracts from the, the quality of the shirt, don't you think? Okay, then I'm going to turn it off now. Make sure it doesn't foam up and then turn all of that off and turn this off too. But before you want to turn this off, I'm going to throw some Parmesan cheese on there. You knew I was going to say that, right? And yes, this should be served with lemon. Okay, I'm going to throw some Parmesan right on top of that as it's sitting in the low simmer. make that kind of marry to the the other ingredient and give it a shake too shake it all up all right we're almost done here it's probably a, a good idea to taste your bow tie pasta see where you're at so grab one of those bow ties, pull it out, and set it right next to you. It's not done yet. Right. Crank it up. Crank it back up. Yeah, take it up to level six. It's not done yet. Good eye check. Um, that's a bannable offense. No mention of that in the show ever. There's somebody impersonating a family member. Bad enough I have family members impersonating family members. But, yeah, I got this person impersonating a family member. Well, when a family member impersonates a family, you know, family member, it's because it's, they're trying to be a family member. But that guy is just a weirdo. Okay, it's still got to cook at level three. Yeah. No, the only rules to follow, Anderson, is stop disrespecting me, okay? Yeah, show a little respect. Kind of like Rodney Dangerfield. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I got no respect. Take my wife, for example. She, she put, puts my head in cryogenics. I give her $200,000, and she puts my head in cryogenics. Talk about getting a little head. I'll tell you. But no, seriously. He put it, they, they couldn't afford his whole body. They literally put his his head in cryogenics. I mean, Rodney Dangerfield will have a bionic body someday. Come on, cook. Jeez. Cook. They also call this farafowl. Farafowl is another word for bow tie pasta. I guess it's Italian or something. I do have 20-25 vision, but David, I thought you were a free speech advocate. Don't that apply here? Not when it talks about me, man. Y'all dissing me. That's not cool, baby. I don't like that, man. No, you don't you come into my show and, and talk about my nipples. And if you want to say, yeah, dude, you got a really sculpted physique. You're looking good. Go ahead. I won't I won't purge that. But you people that run around acting like I'm overweight when I'm not is insane. Literally insane. And it's fat shaming. And all these people right now who are rotund are saying, Dave, help us out. You know, they're picking on you. You imagine what they would call me, a big fat pig. So please, stop with the fat shaming, okay? 
there are people in here who are sensitive. They have a couple extra hundred pounds that they don't know what to do with. Stop it, okay? Not only are you leading to the breakdown of what's left of our society due to the COVID spacing and the nonsensical diapers that we have to wear, but you're contributing to a general malaise, and that's the last thing we need right now. People should love their bodies. Feel your blubber. You know? Okay, time's up. It's going in there whether I like it or not. Okay. I'm going to run some water down the drain. I'm going to pop this. Actually, no, I'm going to keep the heat in the house. It's still, it's still winter time. So if you want to lock your drain up, if you lock your drain up, it'll go right in there and heat the kitchen. Whoa. Flying bow tie in the air. Hello. There you go. Man, that bow tie just doesn't want to get in there. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Rinsing the bow tie. Okay. I'm going to put it in the container. Covering. Now's a good time to put a little Parmesan on top of it. Because that'll float down into the bottom of the dish. Okay. That adds the flavor too. Okay, we're gonna put the fish on top of this. Ta da! Okay. Pulling the fish out one by one. Now you can break up the fish later. You can go also go like that and cut it if you want. If you're super serving two people, this stuff will break apart on its own. Like that just did, see? See, that would be three three meals right there. Take the, uh, the pasta. Oh, I'm using the wrong spoon. Hang on. Taking the vegetables and pressing them in. You can't even see it. There you go. We've got the fish on the top. We're putting the vegetables down the sides. This thing is loaded with vegetables. Man, I really went all out. Look at that. Man. Fantastic, Mr. Trump. Even the cauliflower that came in late got done. Look at that. Okay, now you're naturally mixing that, that sour cream in there with it and the onions. And what I call this dinner really is a mock codfish dinner, but I'm not going to call it that because it's rockfish. But my family used to make New England codfish dinners very similar to this, and we would put bacon on top of it. Press it all down, and you've got more than enough food for five people. Seriously. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Yeah, you won't you won't be uh you won't be looking for more food, that's for sure. All right, everyone, thank you for coming in. I'll be back in the other show in about two or three minutes. Top it off with butter.